What's happening guys and girls, Akronator here and welcome to another episode of Unanswered. I've been playing a lot of Diablo 3 ever since the game went on sale for the franchise's 20th anniversary, and there's been this one bit of the main storyline that's been bugging me. Any of you who've played through Diablo might know what I'm talking about. In the very first cinematic for Diablo, before you even start the game, you see two of the main characters, an old man who's appeared in every Diablo title to date, Deckard Cain, and a new face to the Land of Sanctuary. A young woman who looks to be in her early to mid-twenties is accompanying Cain into the Tristram Cathedral from the original Diablo game. We learn very quickly that this girl is Cain's niece, Leah, and the two seem to be very close. Fast forward to the beginning of the game itself, and us players are sent by Leah into the depths underneath the cathedral to fight off the undead that have risen, and search for for her uncle. We manage to find Kane running away from the Skeleton King, where we then rescue him from the undead onslaught. When we bring Kane back to the town of New Tristram, Leah is overjoyed to see her uncle alive and well, but the happy moment doesn't last for too long. Kane immediately goes off about his studies and ancient texts that have predicted the end of days. Leah, on the other hand, doesn't want to believe these old fairy tales so easily. She moves that we deal with the cultists running amok before worrying about anything else. The first act of the main storyline continues on going deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole, and ends with many of Cain's predictions being proven true, though at the cost of his life. Leah, with the help of the fallen angel Tyriel, comes to acknowledge her uncle's work, and promises to finish what he started so many years ago. Leah is an interesting character for the Diablo series to introduce, because she has an extreme amount of caution approaching the pre-established lore. She doesn't want to allow the world's superstitions to get in the way of preventing tragedy. This skepticism has led many fans of the game to either love or hate Leah's characterization. Personally, I'm the former, but I can understand some of the complaints against her. There are a few more interesting facts about Leah that are important to who she is, which I'll quickly go over before getting into the plot hole and my theory behind it. One of the first quests we take part in during the first act is to follow Leah to her mother's old hut just outside of town. Her mother, Adria, was considered by many of the townsfolk to be a witch, something that seems more apparent when finding her old notes in a cave underneath her house. After completing the quest, Leah decides to stay behind and learn as much as she can about her supposedly deceased mother while we forge on. While exiting the hut, we get a narrated passage from Adria's journal, where she describes someone named Aiden coming to visit her to calm his nerves. This name may seem random and meaningless to new players of Diablo, but as someone who owns the original game, it's a huge red flag. The very first installment to the Diablo franchise focused solely on the town of Tristram, with all the dungeon levels being connected to the cathedral's catacombs. Funnily enough, you also get to experience a mini version of this when doing the anniversary event in Diablo 3, but I digress. Aiden was the name of the Prince of the Land, and the son of Leoric, who was the king before he was corrupted into the Skeleton King. Aiden was very much an elusive entity, since you always heard about the prince going missing in the first game, but only after making it to the final boss Diablo does everything become clear. Aiden had become a vessel to the Lord of Terror, and was the root of all the corruption from the original game. You even get to see him briefly in the original Endgame cinematic, however low the quality was back then. And just in case you're wondering why I'm so far off track, don't worry, I'm bringing this all back around to Leah eventually. Heading back to Diablo 3's story for the time being, we have to fight the leader of the cultists, Magda, through Act 1. Unfortunately, she manages to kill Deckard Cain and toy with Leah before escaping for the time being. Leah unleashes special powers she has, and Magda says they're the result of being a witch's daughter. She also alludes to Adria still being alive and messing with her cultists elsewhere in the world. This is all, of course, a lot for Leah to take in, and she has so many questions, but first we give Cain a proper send-off. It's at this moment that Leah vows to finish her uncle's work and find her mother after so so long. We then venture into the second act of the game, where Leah manages to find her mother Adria. After rescuing her from some guards in the sewers, Adria helps us unmask everything that's going on in the deserts of Chaldeum. She helps us take down the lesser evil Belial, and claim the mythical black soul stone for ourselves, the soul stone being an artifact used to store the souls of any and all demons. Throughout the latter half of Act 2, and the majority of Act 3, we watch as Adria pushes Leah further in order to develop her powers. It's just on the brink of being cruel, but it's for the cause of capturing the last of the seven evils, Asmodan. And Leah seems to want to go along with the plan, so we don't say anything. At the end of the game's third act, just after we take down Asmodan and trap his soul, Adria betrays us. Somewhat predictably, Adria had ulterior motives, and the time was right to finally see them through. As it turns out, Adria is the consort to Diablo, and she helped capture the other evils so that the Lord of Terror could become the ultimate demon lord. Leah's father is revealed to be a possessed Aiden, making her the perfect vessel for the prime evil when he's released from the Black Soulstone. Keep in mind that I'm watering down the story a lot, but this is the only way that I can get through the video without spending a freaking hour just on backstory. Anyways, Adria and the now possessed Leah open a portal to the high heavens, and and this happens.
even in the heart of heaven, angels can still feel fear. the last time we see Leah. She's mentioned a few more times, mostly in the fifth act that came with the Reaper of Souls expansion, but nothing more than a passing notice. If Diablo possessed any other person, I would have just assumed that their soul was destroyed once the prime evil entered the body. But Leah is different. She was conceived from a Diablo-possessed father, making her half-demon, a fact that's confirmed on the official wiki. As we've learned thus far, the Black Soul Stone holds on to any demon soul trapped within it for eternity. The main theory I want to discuss is whether or not Leah's soul is intact within the Soul Stone. She is the daughter of one of the seven demon lords, and not just any demon lord, but the one often referred to as the leader of the seven evils. Leah is bound to have some measure of power, something that we've seen time and time again. I believe that there may yet be hope for Leah to return to the Diablo lore at some point. Unfortunately, we don't get a clear answer from the gameplay, hence this video. Even though we do chase down Adria in Act 5, the player character, regardless of class, feels a lot of remorse for not being able to protect Leah, and goes on a witch hunt, literally. We track down and kill Adria, but it seems we may have acted brash, since we didn't get any information whatsoever out of her. Of course we wanted to ask Adria about Leah's true fate, but we also needed to ask her how to defeat the main boss of the Reaper of Souls expansion, Malthale. Yet the dialogue in the fight is minimal, and we don't get any useful information one way or the other out of Adria. She draws her final breath, and dies a useless death. And now you're all caught up with Leah's story. We're pretty much left at a dead end for the time being. Blizzard has stated that they're not entirely sure whether or not Leah will return, meaning that they haven't completely discounted her coming back at some point. Though they did clearly state that if she were to make a return, it wouldn't be for a while. They said that Leah's apparent death had made a big impact on the lore, and they don't want to completely undo that so soon after, which I can respect. So even if you agree with me that Leah has the potential to be trapped within the Soul Stone, and Blizzard's statements up to this point are promising enough to convey a someday response, there's still a few issues present. We don't know in what kind of shape or mindset Leah will be in if and when she comes back. Sure, she was our friend and wanted nothing more than to help us rid the world of the Demon Lords, but there's no telling when she'll be released. It's almost definitely not going to happen until at least Diablo 4 comes out, meaning that we would no longer be playing as the player characters Leah used to know. We'd be a whole new generation of adventurers. Leah would have no reason to trust us in our new forms, and that's not even taking into account the possibility of corruption from within the Black Soulstone. Remember that for the time being, all seven Demon Lords are also trapped in there with her. We don't know what it's like inside the Black Soulstone, or if those trapped inside can communicate with each other. At the very least, we have some clues that say that Diablo can't, since he communicated with Adria to set up their whole plan to release him. That's a whole lot of darkness for little old Leah to be subjected to for who knows how long. There's no telling if she'll become aligned with her father or any of the other demon lords within the stone, or even becoming something of a new demon lord herself. And short of going into the stone ourselves, I get the feeling we're not finding out anytime soon. So what do I think about all this? Like I said before, I do think that we'll see Leah in one form or another in a future installment to the Diablo franchise, but it's hard for me to guess how well off she'll be when released. If I had to guess, I'd say that she's probably not going to be on our side anymore, and will at the very least take up a role similar to what her mother was for Diablo. I just don't see her coming back as one of the good guys again. Seeing how strong she became just before being taken over, she'd become something of Diablo's version of Warcraft's Green Jesus. But that's just my thoughts on the matter. What do you guys think? Will Leah come back as her old self or some kind of demon? Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, maybe even subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Links for my social media and whatnot are in the description below. And that's all the time I've got for today. So until next time, don't die.